Hello everyone and welcome to the introduction to your topic um, which is all about the local history of our city of Lincoln, the cathedral, the castle. Um, I know some of you call it yellow bellies, some of you call it local history, um, whatever it happens to be. Um, so I'm Miss Neil from Priory Pembroke, I'm the art teacher and I'm going to be developing some art projects with you um, based on our fantastic city and the interesting buildings and things that we have in the city centre that attracts lots and lots of tourism every single year. Um, and what I'm going to do to start with is talk through some of the wonderful buildings we've got, some of the lovely pieces of sculpture we've got in the city as well that you might not know much about. And um, at the end, you will see that Quizmaster Neil has um, put together a little quiz so you can get yourself into teams or you can do it by yourselves in your classroom. Um, and you can see who has remembered the most in terms of facts and who is listening really carefully. OK, so let's make a start. So Lincoln Cathedral, quite a lot of you will have done some research on that. Uh, it was William the Conqueror that actually requested the building to be built in the first place. Um, and in between 1311 and 1549, okay, it was actually the world's tallest building for 238 years, okay, and then the spire collapsed and it wasn't actually rebuilt, okay. Um, the first building to hold the tallest in the world was the Great Pyramid in Egypt. It's actually the third largest cathedral in the UK, okay, in terms of floor space. All right, there's St Paul's in London and York Minster that are actually larger in terms of how much space they take up within the city. It was damaged in a great fire in 1192. OK, it was also damaged in an earthquake in 1185. Um, and Tom Hanks visited our city in 2005 and he filmed parts of the Da Vinci Code inside the cathedral as well. So it really does attract quite a lot of attention. And more importantly, it's now an icon for the city. So you'll notice that quite a few schools and various businesses um, have actually taken the shape of the cathedral, particularly because we can see it on the horizon from a distance. And it's, it's probably the tallest part of the city and it's on the top of the of the hill as well. So it really can be seen for miles around. And it is the most iconic building in the city. So it it has become a logo, if you like, for quite a lot of um, Lincoln businesses, schools and also the tourist information. OK, so if you visit Lincoln, um, you'll notice that the cathedral is is quite um, prominent in terms of the merchandise we give out um, to tourists as part of our city's tourism um, initiative. But we've got lots and lots of other buildings as well. All right. So I have done a bit of research and found out things about various different buildings and bits of artwork within the city. OK, which we'll be testing your knowledge on later at the end with a quiz. So this building here you'll recognise. All right. It's um, on the high street. OK, it's Stokes Coffee Shop now. Um, but you can see it from the back there as you park in Lucy Tower and you perhaps walk along the Brayford through the little snicket and up those stairs. OK, and you come out by Primark. Um, so you can see that it's actually built on something called a high bridge over the river. And that was built in 1160. And it's actually one of the only Tudor buildings that still sits on a high bridge. OK, so it is incredibly historic and really, really important. And you can see from the front there, it's beautiful with the with the, the wooden um, wooden walls. That are perhaps a little bit bowed actually from from years of being weathered but that lovely black and white decorative sort of um sides to the building we've also got one up on um on steep hill the tourist information center is a tudor building as well and um, so we've got that lovely sort of prominent recognizable black and white sort of rectangular patterns on the on the front and on the back there and those little gorgeous little um sort of uh, window rooftops in the roof which i think are really pretty okay but it is one of only the Tudor buildings that's still standing in the city, all right, particularly along that high street, and it is still on top of that bridge, which is pretty impressive. And you can see there's really old drawing there of it from the front, and we've got a photograph of it from the back. Um, so yeah, it's been standing since 1540, which is an incredibly long time, um, and it's now a coffee shop called Stokes's. Okay, so it is actually really quaint on the inside with sort of big beams and low ceilings um, and tight staircases and things. And actually, the staff there tend, tend to dress up, um, you know, in sort of old fashioned sort of clothing as well every now and again to serve you tea and coffee and cake. So let's go on to the next slide. So the windmill, it's maybe somewhere that you haven't actually visited, but you can see it as you drive in um, from, I know from where near I, where I live, you can see it on the on the on the top there on the hilltop. Okay, it's actually called Ellis Mill. 
OK, and it was one of nine windmills that stood on the Lincoln hilltop um, and it was it was the last working mill in Lincoln and it still works now, even though it's currently, um, you know, sort of closed, if you like. But it was built in 1798. All right. And um, it was bought by John Ellis, hence the name um, Ellis Mill, for just £250 in 1894. And it's been restored and lovingly cared for, OK, by Lincolnshire County Council to keep it working. And it is, again, part of our tourism of the city. Um, and it is very, very beautiful. There's not many windmills that have still got all the sails on there and that, that are still working in the county. But it is, again, a prominent um, sort of building that we can see on the horizon um, on top of the hill if you are driving in from a distance. Our next building is the Jews House, which is on Steep Hill, OK, which is the, the building that you can see in the picture. Um, and it's one of the earliest townhouses in England, OK, not just in Lincoln. Now, Lincoln used to have quite a thriving Jewish community. Um, and the Jews house is related to a story, which is an alleged murder of a child called Little Hugh um, in 1255. Um, so that sort of legend and that story kind of uh, um, revolves around this house and the Jews garden. And, um, and a well that's a little bit further up near the cathedral. OK, it is still open. It's always been used. It's been a restaurant. It's been an antique shop. It's been a bookshop. Um, it's been a residency. So it is actually a building that's incredibly old. I love the stonework. I love the little windows. Um, and it, you know, it is a listed building and it's, it's still in use today. OK, but that's something that people maybe point out if they are visiting um, Lincoln, particularly to look at the architecture and look at the history of the city. Lincoln Castle, I'm sure we've all been there numerous times. So right, we've had a walk around the wall where you can see um, for miles around, particularly on a clear day, you get a really good view right round um, the perimeter of the city if you walk the entire distance of the wall. It's a Norman castle. OK, again, it was constructed by William the Conqueror. Um, it's had it's got a lot of history to it lots and lots of history which you can really read into it's far too much to fit in just this little chat and um on this powerpoint slide okay but it's quite unique um it's only one of two castles in england to have a mot which is um comes from the term mot and bailey castle right where it's actually got turrets built on a raised area of ground and we know again that the castle is up on the hill obviously because that would have been the best place to put it in terms of invasions and intruders we can you know somebody on the wall there can see um people coming or who may be attacking for, for miles around but actually lincoln castle holds something quite dear to pembroke because that's how we ended up with our name um the priory pembroke academy okay the battle of lincoln took there in 1217 we opened in 2017 and william marshall the earl of pembroke okay was the one who led the forces against the french attack so we've taken our name from william marshall and him being the earl of pembroke um, so, yes, so the history of our city is quite prominent to our school. So the next one, which you might not think much about, but I'm sure lots of you have walked past here as you've been to Nando's for your tea or you've been to the cinema. Um, if you park in Lucy Tower and walk into the city, you'll go under this bridge. Um, it's had a beautiful mural actually painted on it since um, this, this, these two plaques went up. But on one side it says, where have you been? And on the other side it says, where are you going? And that was put in place by designer Andy Plant, who also designed the Brayford Chimes, which are a little bit further down um, past the car park um, on the riverfront, which is actually a clock using water to tell the time. It chimes every hour um, and at, at night it's actually lit up and there is there is a time on, on the bottom. OK, but yeah, it's, it, the, the questions are quite nice because I always read them when I walk from from that end of town into town. And I always kind of kind of answer them in your head without knowing it. You know, where have you been? Well, I've been at home or I've been to the shops or I've been in this place or I've been in a place. Where are you going? You're going to meet your friends. You're going out. You're going home wherever. You know, you do kind of subliminally answer it in your head. All right. So, yeah, we've got public art everywhere and public art is artwork that is outside. So it could be a plaque like this. It could be a sculpture. It could be um, a mural of which we've now got a few of in the city centre. OK, but I just think the um, the public arts is important as the architecture, really, because it is a sort of permanent feature now as well. So that does entice the the appearance of that bridge and public art also actually minimises graffiti and litter throwing and that kind of thing. So it is a positive thing to have in our city. 
So the most prominent sculpture is perhaps this one called Empowerment, which is just sort of outside Wilco's um, and either side of the River Witham there or the canal, whatever you happen to call it. We've got these two figures that are sort of coming out of turbine blades. Um, and it was it was commissioned. It was it was arranged to be made some sort of sculpture to be made to mark the turn of the millennium, which was the year 2000. I think it went up in 2002, actually. Um, but again, it's about the heritage of the city and Lincoln and Gainsborough and some of the surrounding areas were really big into sort of steam work and engineering. Um, you know, we made the tank for the world for World War One and that kind of thing. And that's the sort of heritage that um, we need to kind of keep alive. So we've got these two big sort of turbine blades that suddenly sort of morph into these um, outstretched figures that are trying to touch hands um, and empower one another from either side of the um, river. And it's actually 16 metres tall at its highest point. So you can see it really does create quite a striking silhouette and frames um, both parts of the city, no matter which way round you're um, looking at it. And you can see Stokes's coffee shop there on top of the bridge from the other side of the street. Um, their two hands are sort of pointing to it, which is quite nice. We've got two bits of public art as well to show you. Um, this one is um, a big stainless steel face made by Rick Kirby. Um, and it's on the back, if you like, of the of the drill hall. Now, sadly, now the drill hall's actually closed, but I'm sure we've all been and enjoyed a pantomime or two. Um, you've maybe even had some school shows there um, a long time ago. Who knows? But you can see from the front, it's actually quite an interesting building. It's got this kind of castle top and these old windows. Um, and inside, it's actually really quite nice. Um, so originally, it was built for military use for military training for the Lincolnshire Rifle Volunteers and the Lincolnshire Regiment. Um, and it was used as a social kind of um, place as well. So, you know, social events would have taken place there too. But it's maybe most famous because in 1963 on New Year's Eve, the Rolling Stones, OK, so Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, um, the Rolling Stones, really, really massive band in the 60s. And I'm sure lots of dads and grandparents are a big fan still. And they're still, you know, going now, even though the guys are pretty old. But the Rolling Stones actually came and played in Lincoln in 1963, which is amazing at the drill hall and it's not a very big venue if you've been inside you know it's quite small in terms of the auditorium and the steel face okay um is by rick kirby who sort of specializes in figurative sculpture and i think there's another one that's very similar in london so we're quite honored to have a piece of his work um on our um drill hall wall in the city which is, is pretty impressive but it's made of lots and lots of tiny little steel kind of rectangles if you like that are all welded together um, and he's seen as a bit of a guardian if, if you if you like for the city it's quite a prominent face um, that stands out I definitely always have a look at it from um, from various angles if I walk past I think it's really really quite pretty um, and then the last one which you may walk past, you might not have even seen it actually, because it's surrounded by a bit of a hedge. Um, but in St Mark's Square, so outside sort of Debenhams um, and uh, I've forgotten the name of the shop, but never mind. Outside Debenhams, okay, in that little bit there, um, we've got St Mark's Square, and this is these two sculptures stand on sort of stone plinths. Um, and they're called exotic combs and they're based on the Banksia nut, which is this nut um, which is found, a big seed pod, which is found in Australia, which you can see at the top of the PowerPoint slide there. And what um, Peter Randall Page, who's the sculptor, has actually done is he's simplified those little openings where the seeds would actually drop out of that pod. Um, into these basic patterns and, and replicated them. So one goes around horizontally, the other pattern goes around vertically. So he's got this pair of sort of pod sort of cone shapes, if you like, made from stone that are carved based on the Banksia nut. And the Banksia nut got its name from somebody called Joseph Banks, um, who's from Lincoln, who um, travelled with James Cook to Australia and he found this nut and he brought it back with him, OK, because he was... Um, somebody who is interested in plants and um, we've got a room named after him at the lawn as well. So he is um, somebody who is prominent to Lincoln. OK, we've got a window named um, after him and features in Lincoln Cathedral as well. Um, so he is quite an important figure, but I think most people walk past these and don't even know anything about them or why they're there. So they aren't just random stone sculptures. They're actually, again, relating to the history of our city and the people who live there and, and what's been going on many, many years ago. So now it is time for Quizmaster Neil okay, to test your knowledge. So who was listening really carefully and who's got a very good memory? 
Okay, let's hand over to Quizmaster Neil then and let's see how many questions you can get right. Hello and welcome to the quiz. After you've gone through that PowerPoint, hopefully you're really knowledgeable and you've got a pen and paper ready. Here we go. So quiz about Lincoln with Quizmaster Neil. Question number one. For how many years was Lincoln Cathedral the tallest building in the world? Was it A, 210, B, 173, C, 238 or D, 294? So that's how many years was Lincoln Cathedral the tallest building in the world? A, 210, B, 173, C, 238, or D, 294. Question number two. Exotic cones, a sculpture in St Mark's Square, is connected to who? Is it A, William the Conqueror, B, James Cook, C, Joseph Banks, or D, Simon Cowell? So exotic cones, the sculpture that is in St Mark's Garden, OK, is connected to who? A, William the Conqueror, B, James Cook, C, Joseph Banks or D, Simon Cowell. Question number three. What type of castle is Lincoln Castle? Is it A, Tudor, B, Victorian, C, Anglo-Saxon or D, Norman? So that's what type of castle is our castle in Lincoln? Is it A, Tudor, B, Victorian, C, Anglo-Saxon or D, Norman? Question four. The drill hall was originally built for military use in 1890, but which world-renowned band played there on New Year's Eve in 1963? So the drill hall that was originally built for military use in 1890 had a world-renowned band play there on New Year's Eve in 1963. Which band was that? Question five. Which movie had parts of it filmed in the cathedral in 2005? Which movie had parts of it filmed in Lincoln Cathedral in 2005? Question six. Ellis Mill was originally one of how many windmills stood on the Lincoln Hilltop? So Ellis Mill was originally one of how many windmills stood on Lincoln Hilltop? OK, number seven, another multiple choice. The Jews house is said to have had a murder take place around there. Who was allegedly murdered? Was it A, Little Stu, B, Little Hugh, C, Little Dave, or D, Little Bill? So the Jews house is related to a story where an alleged murder took place. Who was it who was allegedly murdered? Was it A, Little Stu, B, Little Hugh, C, Little Dave, or D, Little Bill? Question eight. What is the Tudor building today that was built on Highbridge in 1540? So the Tudor building that was built on Highbridge in 1540 in Lincoln City on the High Street. What is that building now? Question nine. There are two questions that the city asks you when you walk under the bridge on the Brayford. What are they? So that's what are the two questions that the city asks you when you walk under the bridge on the Brayford? Question 10. How tall is the sculpture Empowerment in metres? How tall is the sculpture Empowerment in metres? Question 11. Who wanted a castle building in Lincoln in the first place? Was it A, William Marshall, B, William the Conqueror, 
C, William Shakespeare, or D, David Walliams? So who wanted the castle building in Lincoln? Was it A, William Marshall, B, William the Conqueror, C, William Shakespeare, or D, David Walliams? And then last question, number 12. How much did John Ellis buy Ellis Windmill for in 1894? Was it A, 350 pounds, B, 250 pounds, or C, 650 pounds? So in 1894, John Ellis bought Ellis Windmill. How much did he pay? Was it A, £350, B, £250, or C, £650? Right, your teacher and you can now go back through the PowerPoint, find the answers and you can mark and see how many you got right and who is the most knowledgeable Lincoln person in your class. <laughs> 